The internet is very hype. Why? Because a spiritual successor to Dishonored and Prey is on the way and people are very, very excited. Now, this comes from Wolfeye Studios, a studio you may not know the name of unless you happen to play Weird West, but the internet is quickly remembering because they have revealed their new game and it looks a lot like Dishonored. We need a new Dishonored. Let's talk about why this is is exciting. Oh my goodness, right now, can't even talk. <laughs> so this was announced just yesterday and people are really excited because people have been really hungry for a new Dishonored. And long story short, uh, Raphael Colantonio posted a glimpse of what the next game would look like and included an alpha test signup. Now, if you look at some of these shots, you can clearly see sort of a, a desolate sort of wasteland type setting, very rustic. I'm not sure what you, word to use. We have some sort of generator being worked on here by two random workers. You got that dishonored vibe going on and then you have what could be an enemy combatant or potentially a character that you interact with and right away this is doing it for a lot of people in just the right way because everybody is excited about this potentially being the dishonored we never got now you may be wondering who is uh rafael colantonio and i hadn't heard the name before but He's been in the industry for a very long time. He knew about the Ultima series. It, it says here, he participated in a contest held by EA on knowledge about the Ultima series, which he had been a fan of, and he ended up somehow getting involved with <laughs> um, games since then. Long story short, he ended up working on titles like Dishonored 2 and Prey, and now we have seen the new project. But this isn't the first time we have heard from these creators. So I, I started digging through to learn more about Colantonio and Julian Roby just for this video so that I could sort of talk about why people are excited. And there was this old GameIndustry.biz article where they sort of talked about some very interesting things. Shout out to Rebecca Valentine, by the way, for writing it. A lot of people ask me, why would you leave Arcane? This is about the time when he had left. It's heaven, Colantonio says. And it kind of was. In my case, I needed a break. It had been 18 years in the same room, and I needed to define myself. Was there a bit of an identity thing going on? Who am I without Kane? That was very important to my growth. Roby said, with Wolfi, we really wanted to get back to the core ideas we both like in games, both as players and as designers. We like games that respond to player actions, where the world reacts and what to what you are doing and the experiences owned by the player. It was what we wanted to get back to rather than being constantly distracted by the complexity of doing games, which are technically more involved. And little by little, your focus in development moves away from the actual experience toward technicalities which in the end don't change the experience much this was so refreshing to read because in the modern market i think developers often get the incorrect message that games have to be visually beautiful and visually stunning and push the boundaries of anything but we've seen time and time again that games that have these perfect character models that look almost photorealistic, but just do not have a gameplay loop that works. They, they don't see success. Suicide Squad comes to mind widely praised for the character models and how great they looked. But the problem is you got these great looking character models in a game that has a bad story, has derivative gameplay, has splashy colors all over the place. And it seems like the priorities have just been out of whack for so long. Fast forward to today, you have games like Helldivers 2 that sort of have an art style and go with it, but it's not the most graphically impressive game on the market. It, it does garner enough interest, though, to keep you going. Now, their first game was this little game called uh, Weird West. Here's some footage of it just playing in the background. Weird West, obviously top down, talking about the things that happen. And if you look into the history of the, the creators, it sort of makes sense that this is their, their first foray into the market. This ended up getting an, an aid on IGN. And I think it was, 
you know, mostly received in a positive manner. People seem to like it. And now they are able to begin their new project. And when you, as soon as you start looking at these images, obviously you get dishonored vibes, right? You know, you have this worker right away. You're thinking this looks a lot like a dishonored character. You have this setting where there's a lot of machinery. People are working on the machine here. Maybe this power is something. You see the posters in the background. Again, you get those vibes. You can imagine a combat encounter while running through this area. And then you get their overall visual aesthetic and their look at the overworld. And clearly, you are starting to imagine navigating this space in the first person's perspective. And yes, this is a first person game. And people have been kind of losing their mind about this a little bit. Now, just a real quick, I want to find this one tweet that I saw that sort of gives a really quick synopsis of what this game will be. Uh, their next game, it's going to be a first person retro sci-fi action RPG. It has Ralph Colantonio, Mick Gordon. Mick Gordon, you might know from the Doom soundtrack. He does all that awesome heavy metal Doom stuff. Great to see him working again. Uh, Cedric... Paravani, uh, Chris Avalone, I know that name too. Can't remember what he worked on, but I do recognize that name. Gail Girado, Christoph Car Carrier, and many more immersive sim veterans. First, visuals reveal, and there is a private alpha sign up. So if you actually go to the website right now, you can do a private alpha sign up, and uh, people are very excited about that. Chris Avalon worked on the Fallout games, Alpha Protocol, uh, Knights of the Old Republic. So he definitely has. <laughs> He definitely has worked on a, a few of the more popular games. His more recent works include, what do we have? Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That was back in 2019. Uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. He was an additional narrative designer, and he worked, importantly, on Prey and Pillars of Eternity. He was a writer on. So lots of really, really interesting talent at this company, and the reaction has been really positive. Now, the original tweet I saw related to this was Raphael Colantonio saying, we'll reveal a bit about our next game in a few days. Fans of the previous first-person games I was involved with, Dishonored and Prey, will be happy. Of course, people mentioning Blade, and he's like, yes, Arcane's working on Blade. This is their new studio. They revealed the screenshots and Everybody working on the game is also really stoked. We are very, very, very excited for our next game. Here's a little taste, of course, retweeting the first visuals of it. And everybody definitely has those appropriate vibes. Let's go back to the interview because there were a few things that he said that sort of really struck a chord with me and gave me the impression that they're on the right track with this game. Concerns with the industry's relentless pursuit of graphical and technical improvements is high on the list of things motivating Colantonio and Roby to strike out on their own. I noticed both as a developer and a gamer, I think it's been two or three generations of games now, I've been playing the same game, Colantonio says. The only difference is that it's more beautiful, higher resolution, more shaders, but really the game is the same. I remember this funny moment where we were doing Dishonored and I asked my lead programmer how many characters I could have in combat and he answered something, something between five and six. I thought, okay, well that makes sense. The AI is what it is and we had characters with 10,000 polys or whatever they were. Fast forward four or five years, we're doing Prey. It's a new engine, new technology, new hardware. I'm back with my lead programmer, same question, how many characters, maybe five or six. The only difference between one generation to the next was that the budget had doubled, and because the budget was doubled, it goes into more people. Instead of taking three months to make a character, it takes six months now. There's more optimization that is required, more of everything, every detail, making sure the eyes are perfect and the sun shines the right way. I am so happy to hear a developer talking about these problems because you get these huge budgets but the games aren't pushed forward. Meanwhile, Nintendo is making a fantastic Legend of Zelda on a freaking toaster that blew everybody away and just had these phenomenal sales figures. And I, I'm really interested. This interview has me more interested for the game than the fact that it's a Dishonored or Prey spiritual successor. And I hope you are excited too, because it's really, really great to see somebody 
just echoing the things that we talk about often on this channel and the internet talks about in this interview. So, of course, people are really, really excited. You have, you know, tweets from Arcane Forever saying, Wolfie's next MSIM has been unveiled, sporting a stylish junkyard frontier aesthetic. You can sign up for potential private alpha access. Mick Gordon being very excited. Uh, Blair talking about the alpha test and Mark saying, I married between Dishonored and New Vegas. Yes, please. 100% yes, please. And yeah, uh, Dishonored and New Vegas. Let's freaking go. Am I right? Speaking of, I hope you like this video. That's why people are stoked for the game. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. Tone of my content goes live. Thank you so much for watching. This is like the bonus video. I was looking at the, the Sony financials and I had a busy day. Got to this one late. So I'm going to make this and then I'll do Sony financials next. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much to the members for supporting this channel. If you want to support this channel, help me make videos like this. Click that join button right there or just hit that like button if you're already subscribed. I got to get out of here, but I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.